Hello, Shalom, my Rastafari brothers and sisters and the Ethiopian Hebrew Judeo-Christian community and all of the righteous Gentiles and others who tune in to these uh, weekly readings, feedings, teachings, some revelations, hopefully, to the glory of the King of Kings and His Christ, our Black Lord and Savior, now we're in the 18th uh, sabbatical weekly reading and feeding. This weekly reading and feeding, the 18th, Asara uh, Simintanyawin, is known as Mishpat, 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 or Mishpatim. Judgments in, in the Hebrew and uh, Shirat or Surat, Surat in the and Hark, the world and Hark of the Metzhaf Kedus, which means ordinance, ordinances. Now, we had said in the last, um, the previous portion, which was the 17th which is known as Yotor, and there's, there's much there's much layered in the meaning, especially when you have the Ethiopic code and the keys from the ancient mysteries to decipher the, the context of the Mosaic revelation that's found particularly in this book, which is known in the Hebrew as Shemot, Bamarinya, in the Amharic coming from the Gutas, in the royal Amharic of the Metzhaf Kedus of his Imperial Majesty's Bible, is known as Orit Zeat, which means the Torah of the coming out. And it's very important that we that we study this, especially in this prophetic time. And um, we said we was going to touch on the Ten Command, what's known as the Ten Commandments. But actually, it's the ten words. And there's a very, very important distinction to be made here. So let's call this portion right here that we're going to teach on concerning the so-called ten commandments. Is it really the ten commandments? Or actually, is it the Decalogue, what's known in the Western uh, version as a Decalogue, and a Decalogue means the ten words, the Deca logos, the ten words. What's the significance of these ten words, and how does this relate to ancient Egypt and the so-called 42 uh, negative uh, confessions of Ma'at? Did Moses actually so-called steal it? from ancient Egypt, or did Moses earn the ra'i, what's known as the vision, the ability to reconstruct the ancient Yahwist, or the mystery of, of the Amen, the hidden God, which Revelation tells us in Revelation chapter 3, verse 14, which is a very interesting number, um, dealing with pi, and the so-called golden mean ratio, but that our main is actually our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua Ha Moshia, the Moshia, the Messiah, the Mashi. Now, let us touch on this, the ten words. Now, why are the ten words often called the Ten Commandments? Because many are lost in Gentile misinterpretation or in the Western version only, and they haven't done due diligence to go to the Septuagint or the Koina of the New Testament and study it. It says, study. It says in Psalm, Psalm 1 where it says, Bless, blessed is the man. Asher Ha'ish. Blessed is the man, Miskunno, who studies the word day and night. That means you must do due diligence because even Christ says in the New Testament, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Why are we not free? Because we know 
some truth here and there, but we don't really know the truth, or at least we don't know the truth for I and I selves. And it's because we do not practice the study. And if we practice the study, then we will perfect the knowledge. And if we perfect the knowledge, then we will also perfect I and I manifestation and demonstration in the so-called real world or in this world. And this is what this 2012 bridge is all about. We're going into a new consciousness. What does that mean? That means that the time is now. The time is now. We are in that time. All the signs of the time will prove that to be so. Now, the Ten Commandments, what's called the Ten Commandments are actually ten words. So if it's not the Ten Commandments, then how many commandments are there? There's only one commandment. There's only one commandment. That whole word is but one. We say Shema, Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Achad. Ani me'amin ki Yeshua ha Mushia bein ha Elohim hu. Now what is this? This is our Shema, brothers and sisters, from Deuteronomy six and four, and connected with. Acts of the Apostle, chapter 8, verse 37. The Ethiopian so-called eunuch's witness. But this Ethiopian, he's a key in Acts of the Apostle because he was a Hebrew. He was in Jerusalem for the high holy day of Passover, Fasica. And Fasica now links... This is the link now for the New Testament, the Ethiopian connection. It links with the Passover. And this portion of scripture is after the passing over of that kokeb, what's known as the Nibiru, or some call it Elenin, but from the Ethiopic book, Auda Nagisht, it is known as the star, a particular star. That body is a coquette, and it's under intelligent guidance. So many say, well, you don't see it, or you do see it, or it's not there. We must remember that this star is not just a, a planet or a comet, but it's that Passover comet. And every time in Beta Israel history, when there was a significant um, event, a significant change, a significant transition of the Beta Israel, of our ancestral and ancient black people, the Ethiopian Hebrews, Passover took a significance. Now, this now connects with this portion, this particular portion in the 18th reading and feeding. And brothers and sisters, I know I remind this almost in every sabbatical portion, but you need to get your copy, and you can get it from the website. And we pointed this out um, previously, and we'll point it out one more time, www.lojsociety.org, and click on the, um, the study we have a study, a links page that link to study. So it's the study page. Click on the study page. It's a lot of um, free, downloadable, shareable, studyable materials there. Um, what you can print out, please do print out. But get a copy of Yesam and Tawi, Senbet, Orit, Nabab, or our weekly uh, Sabbath Torah portions, the weekly Torah portion or the Sabbath, the sabbatical Torah portions, because they help us in fulfilling that word that says to remember the Sabbath day, remember the Shabbat day. You see, the Sabbath commandment, or what's known as the Sabbath commandment, really the Sabbath word of that pure commandment, that pure law of God, that's the pure law of the Almighty. Why ten words? Because the ten words link with the ten sifarot. The ten sifarot are, some call it the chakras, some call it the gates in man. But these ten words 
that make the pure commandment. You see, when the Almighty gave the Beit Israel at, at Mount Sina, when he spoke, he spoke his pure law. That, that was pure law. Now, the Ten Commandments and the giving of law is also interesting. And see, these are areas of Scripture, especially where we're at right now in our studies. Although we have to go through them week by week and we keep it moving forward to the next Torah portion, we really have to study and see how they connect. And this is a significant portion because in the last portion, Moses' father-in-law, Jethro, or Yotor, the Medeanite priest, or the Ethiopian Hebrew high priest, he told Moses that Moses had to choose able men in order to carry out the full will of God, of Jah, if you please, for his people. This is the root of Ainai as an organized nation or organizing I and I selves along Jah's pure principles. Now, it begins with the command to teach or the word to teach, that we have to teach and learn. And so whether we're in the Old Testament here in the book of Shemot or what's known as Exodus or whether we go to the Hadith Kidah, the New Covenant, and the words of the Moshiach, or the Messiah, Yehoshua, our black Lord and Savior, Adonenu, Yehoshua, Ha Moshia. It is one and the same. These are various examples, which are, you know, somebody made a statement about, it's like the blind man, right? The blind man uh, feeling an elephant, and they're at different parts of the elephant. And they all think that they're feeling something different. But they cannot see the fullness. This is like the vision. You know, so some may study the, the Kemetian, you know, or ancient Egypt because they can recognize, you see, that's black. And so when they hear about the Bible or the Hebrew Bible or the so-called Jews or the Israelites and they see I and I, they say, no, you have to go back to ancient Egypt. They are partially true there in order to fully disclose the mystery of the first five books or the Ori, the Torah, we need to put it in its historical and its cultural context. But you see, the Ethiopic Code, this is the key. This is the key for we. And this is why we strongly suggest to the brothers and sisters to, to begin the basic Nababe, the basic Fidel, you know, with the Amharic Bible, homeschooling, begin the basics. And y'all willing, we will also assist with certain instructions, hopefully via these means and through the videos that will help ones because the language is the key. The language is the key of the culture. And instead of just being able to go to an Ethiopian restaurant and order something and then press folks, that's good. Yet it's also very good for us in our studies to learn certain key words and to learn the fidels so we can begin to read for ourselves. So when we hold something up like this, at least ones will be able to read and sound out because it's word, sound, and power. The words have a vibration, you know, and with the knowledge of what the words mean and the proper vibrations, they move the ethers, you understand, both within us and align us with the next dimensional, the higher God level, the Ha Elohim level in spirit and in truth, and also to be able to pass over. You understand? And and, and, and that means for us to be able to come out of this spiritual bondage. We're in a, a high state of spiritual bondage. Most of you all know the some of the major events that most folks are focused on, at least right now on this Sabbath day, you know, with the recent um, death of, 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 of an idol, of, 
a, a black person who rose very high in this spiritual Egypt and they're hosting or having the funeral this very day on the Shabbat day now from certain Orthodox uh, Judaic and even ancient perspectives that was something that was strictly forbidden because the Sabbath day is a day of rest not of laying ones to rest there are other days in the week is to do that but why are they doing this is it to create some sort of a black Sabbath or to conduct a, a, a ancient ritual that is actually being re-engineered for a, 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 a new world order or to throw off the true new world order and to keep people in that bondage so that they don't come out, they go deeper in. Now, my brothers and sisters, this is just a, a, a kind of an opening word, you know, and I love to reason with the eye as well as to teach on these things, but we want to keep it relevant with where we're at and what we're studying. So let's deal with the Ten Commandments for a moment, what's called the Ten Commandments. Now, I know we've touched on this previously, and we'll touch on it once again right here. So grab your pen and your paper and your sacred scripture and get ready to hear some of the most dynamic truths ever to reach these shores known as America since our ancestors, the once lost but now found Beta Israel, was brought to this hemisphere fulfilling Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15 to verse 68, circa 1530 A.D. So stay tuned, brothers and sisters. Shalom, Rastafari. More to come.